Hello, welcome to another episode of John's Non Sequitur, and today we're going to talk about God. We're also going to talk about another logical fallacy. So we got a little bit of a busy day today. Now what are we going to talk about God about? Well, just some random musings I have. Now I don't know a whole lot about the other gods. Um, the one that I know about, because I live in America, is uh, the Christian one, you know. The one who created everything out of nothing, and then sank a bunch of people, and and then made a human being that he decided would be used to resolve people of abstract things like sin. Okay, I'm not going to say whether or not you should believe or shouldn't believe. What I'm going to do is point out some problems that I personally have with how these things work. You can't have an argument where you don't have, like, like facts or 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 anything to back up your point and when you're getting in an argument about whether or not religion is real a lot of the times what you get is well you have to have faith it's what happens when the people who believe run out of arguments they just go well at some point you just have to have faith and i don't but they're welcome to and that's fine so let's talk about this coat looks stupid let's talk about uh, God's divine will and plans. Now, he's given us all free will, correct? We all have free will. But at the same time, he already knows everything. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's both of those things. He put, in, in the Bible, he puts an apple into Eden. And he says, don't eat this. And he's giving them the option, whether or not to eat the apple. But he also knows that they're going to eat it. He he says, you can choose not to, but I already know you're going to. So I'm going to put it there with the knowledge that once you eat it, you're gone and you failed. This is the first of many times that humans have failed to do what it is that God wants them to do. And he kills them or throws them out all the friggin' time. He's either flooding the earth when uh, he had Noah build that boat ark thing. Uh, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because they were fucking too much and they were fucking too many weird things. He just kills and kills and kills and kills and kills and kills and kills. Sometimes he kills to prove points to Satan. Yeah, his favorite person in the world, Satan. Okay, here's the thing with Satan, okay? I don't understand this. He was a fallen angel, correct? Meaning that he was up in heaven before he became Satan. Now, when Adam and Eve ate the apple, Satan became a snake, right? And and was in the... So you're telling me that, like, he fell to heaven like that and then immediately was a snake? What the fuck? Also, I have another question regarding all the weird shit that happens in the Bible. Which, by the way, is a great fucking read. That shit, there's some crazy shit going on in there. But that's what I'm about to get to. There's a bush that catches on fire and talks to somebody. There's snakes that are manipulating people. There's a voice in the sky telling people to murder their kids. There's a, a baby that's born without sex. There's just insanity going on in this book. It is one of the craziest and most fun books you could ever read if you don't take it verbatim. But if you believe all of that craziness, and I don't mean to sound mean, but it does, it is crazy. Whether it's true or not, it's still pretty nuts. You don't see this stuff every day. Why is um, evolution so far-fetched? Wait, animals slowly developing new genetics over time because that's how genetics work and then eventually becoming something else. That's crazy talk. I'm going to go outside and talk to a bush on fire and see if I can find the real answers. That's just my take on it. I, I, I can't find anything that makes any sense in any kind of religion or God um, to the point where the most frustrating thing for me is that there are people born in the world who have no clue that this even exists. They, they had never seen any Christians. They have no idea about any of it. God created everything. Why is he still putting people on places on earth where they have absolutely no chance of ever finding out about them? 
if if what he says is true, they're all going to hell. He's basically just shooting out things that are going to hell. He knows who's going to do what and when. He knows who's going to believe him and who isn't because he created them. So is he just purposely filling up hell? Is he like, here, put them down here. They have no way of ever figuring anything out, and then they can go to hell. And the ones that I need, they'll just um, be boring. And then eventually they'll die and they'll come to heaven. I mean, what do you think? And please don't answer with, you gotta have faith. Please tell me something else. Today's logical fallacy is the two quoque. Two quoque? Two quoque. It's T U space Q U O Q U E. And it is you avoid having to engage with criticism by turning it back on the accuser. You answer the criticism with criticism is literally translating as you too. This fallacy is also known as the appeal to hypocrisy. It is commonly employed as an effective red herring because it takes the heat off of someone having to defend their argument and instead shifts the focus back on the person making the criticism. The example they give is Nicole identified that Hannah has committed a logical fallacy, but instead of addressing the substance of her claim, Hannah accused Nicole of committing a fallacy earlier in the conversation. I got one. Two people are talking about minimum wage, having an argument about minimum wage. And here's the conversation. I've been asking you for about 10 minutes now. Why do you think that people who have jobs shouldn't be making enough money to live on? Isn't the point of having a job to be able to make enough money to live on? Otherwise, what the hell is the point of having a job? And all you keep saying is the same shit over and over. You're just talking in circles. But what about that time you argued about the space budget? How to take it away from all the education money? You didn't give me any statistics on that. All you did was go on and on about the space budget. I remember that. And that's the same thing, isn't it? Okay, we're talking about minimum wage. Do you want to change the subject? Do you want to talk about the space budget? We can do that if you want. I mean, it just sounds to me like you don't want to answer the question. Or that maybe you don't have an answer for the question. You can say, I don't know. I, I, saying I don't know is not necessarily, you know, a fault. I ain't the one to change the subject. You're the one talking about space. All right. I'm here to talk about minimum wage, and those guys, they, you know what, we'll just put up machines. They don't need to have jobs. I'm, uh, um, okay. And that's it. That is two quo, two qui quo, qu quo qui, two quo qui. <laughs> uh, that's today's logical fallacy from your logical fallacy is dot com. Uh, next episode, we're going to be talking about more failures in finding information because I do have to do part two. It might not be fun, but hopefully it'll be funny. See you then.